Dragon Age Inquisition was rated M for Mature by the ESRB and contains blood, intense violence, nudity, sexual content, and strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, my name is Amaranth and I play games for the internet and today we're playing <sighs> Dragon Age Inquisition. <laughs> uh, last time we... You don't need to know what happened last time. Uh, <laughs> all you need to know is that it's time for another Codex reading, since it's been a few episodes. And uh, I still have yet to update my notes, so I apologize if I miss anything or read something twice. However, we will begin with characters. Briala. Watch out for elves in Halamsharal. Almost no one notices they're even present. A servant scrubbing floors, a waiter filling glasses, undergardeners weeding the border, maids and valets dressing nobles. There's no room, alcove, or alley so private you can't find one there. And they're watching. They're organized. The rumor you've heard of some mastermind leading the elves is no rumor. I have reports that this Briala was Selene's personal spy and assassin, a bard of unusual skill. Who she's working for now, we cannot confirm. Say nothing. They will hear you. Part of a communique intercepted by Inquisition agents. Author unknown. Grand Duchess Florian de Chalons. Your Grace, you requested the swiftest, surest method of getting a message to Grand Duke Gaspard, so I have arranged for you to meet with his sister, Grand Duchess Florian de Chalons. While she is of the least account among the current heirs to the Orlesian throne, her connection to her brother is extremely close. Gaspard will listen to anything she says. Be persuasive. M. And that's it. Creatures. Hala. The first thing you must understand about the Hala is that they are not our servants. They are not our pets. They are our brothers and sisters. Remember that Gilanane, the first Hala and mother of them all, was once a huntress of the people. Without the Hala, there would be no Dalish. The second thing you must understand about the Hala is that you cannot force a Hala to do something against her will. I have heard tales of Shemlin who come across herds and attempt to capture the Hala, using ropes and bridles. Many Shemlin have died impaled on horns as a result of this foolishness. Never forget that the Hala once bore our knights into battle. The fierce blood of a warrior still runs through her veins, and she would sooner fight to the death than demean herself. Like the Dalish, the Hala are proud. A Hala knows who she is, and will tolerate no being that tells her that she is less. How then do we harness them to the Aravels? How do we ride them or strap our packs to them? Well, how do you get a brother, a sister, or a friend to do you a favor? Simple, isn't it? You ask. If you have a Hala's trust, she will give you her blessing. It's striking that humans never think to ask for a Hala's friendship, but then they are Shems and respect nothing. Adara, Hala tender of the Ralafarn clan, to her apprentice. That's all from that. History Elgernon, the Allfather. Long ago, when time itself was young, the only things in existence were the sun and the land. The sun, curious about the land, bowed his head close to her body, and Elgernon was born in the place where they touched. The sun and the land loved Elgernon greatly, for he was beautiful and clever. As a gift to Elgernon, the land brought forth great birds and beasts of sky and forest, and all manner of wonderful green things. 
Algernon loved his mother's gifts and praised them highly, and walked amongst them often. The sun, looking down upon the fruitful land, saw the joy that Elgernon took in her works, and grew jealous. Out of spite he shone his face full upon all the creatures the earth had created, and burned them all to ashes. The land cracked and split from bitterness and pain, and cried salt tears for the loss of all she had wrought. The pool of tears cried for the land became the ocean, and the cracks in her body the first rivers and streams. Elgernon was furious at what his father had done, and vowed a vengeance. He lifted himself into the sky and wrestled the sun, determined to defeat him. They fought for an eternity, and eventually the sun grew weak, while Elgernon's rage was unabated. Eventually Elgernon threw the sun down from the sky, and buried him in a deep abyss created by the land's sorrow. With the sun gone, the world was covered in shadow and all that remained in the sky were the reminders of Elgernon's battle with his father, drops of the sun's lifeblood, which twinkled and shimmered in the darkness. From the tale of Elgernon and the sun, as told by Gishrael, keeper of the Ralafarin clan of the Dalish elves. Then Harel, the Dread Wolf There is precious little we know about Fen Harel, for they say he did not care for our people. Elgernon and Nathal created the world as we know it. Andriel taught us the ways of the hunter. Salaise and June gave us fire and crafting. But Fenharel kept to himself and plotted the betrayal of all the gods. And after the destruction of Arlathan, when the gods could no longer hear our prayers, it is said that Fenharel spent centuries in a far corner of the earth, giggling madly and hugging himself in glee. The legends say that before the fall of Arlathan, the gods we know and revere fought an endless war with others of their kind. There is not a Haren among us who remembers these others. Only in dreams do we hear whispered the names of Geldaran, Galduran, and Derenthal and Anaris, for they are the forgotten ones, the gods of terror and malice, spite and pestilence. In ancient times, only Fenharel could walk without fear among both our gods and the Forgotten Ones, for although he is kin to the gods of the people, the Forgotten Ones knew of his cunning ways, and saw him as one of their own. And that is how Fenharel tricked them. Our gods saw him as brother, and they trusted him when he said that they must keep to the heavens while he arranged a truce, and the Forgotten Ones trusted him also when he said that he would arrange for the defeat of our gods if only the Forgotten Ones would return to the Abyss for a time. They trusted Fenharel, and they were all of them betrayed, and Fenharel sealed them away so they could never again walk among the people. From the tale of Fenharel's triumph, as told by Gisharel, keeper of the Ralafarin clan of the Dalish elves. June, God of the Craft. We dedicate all our crafts to June, for it is he who taught the people to bend the branches of trees to make our bows, and to fashion coverings of firs and iron bark. Without June, would we have the Aravel or the harnesses for our hala? When the people were young, we wandered the forests without purpose. We drank from streams and ate the berries and nuts that we could find. We did not hunt, for we had no bows. We wore nothing, for we had no knowledge of spinning or needlecraft. We shivered in the cold nights and went hungry through the winters, when all the world was covered in ice and snow. Then Salaise the hearthkeeper came and gave us fire and taught us how to feed it with wood. June taught us to fashion bows and arrows and knives so that we could hunt. We learned to cook the flesh of the creatures we hunted over Salaise's fire, and we learned to clothe ourselves in their furs and skins, and the people were no longer cold and hungry. As told by Gisharel, keeper of the Ralafarin clan of the Dalish elves. Memorials of the Second Exalted March The Path of Flame 
Remember where Andraste's champions first set foot in the exalted plains called Dirth Avaren by the elves. Halam Sharal's dark heart was conquered, but one last challenge came from the elves who would not submit to the Maker. They gathered upon the plain, our champions answered their call. Marching in Andraste's light on the path of flame, Lord Demetrius Aron, Sister Amity, and Sir Brandis of Loch Celestine called the Silver Helm. Demetrius's end. Remember Lord Demetrius Aron, the only one of Andraste's champions to fall. The forces of the exalted march met the elves upon the field. Our numbers far exceeded theirs. The champions, kind and fair, gave the elves a chance for peace. But the elves would not lay down their arms. They slew Lord Demetrius in their charge. Make her take him to his side. The Denarius Fall. Remember the victory of the Dales. The elves were murderous and wild, for the Maker's grace did not touch them. The wildest of them was the she-elf Lindare. Lindina, Lindirane. Lindirane. God, pff, Lindinare. Wielder of the Great Blade of Anura. Defiant to the last, she met Sir Brandis, the Silver Helm, in single combat, combat and he bested her. With Lindinare fell the Dales. Mithal, the Great Protector. Elgernon had defeated his father, the sun, and all was covered in darkness. Pleased with himself, Elgernon sought to console his mother, the earth, by replacing all that the sun had destroyed. But the earth knew that without the sun, nothing could grow. She whispered to Elgernon this truth and pleaded with him to release his father. But Elgernon's pride was great, and his vengeance was terrible, and he refused. It was at this moment that Mithal walked out of the sea of the earth's tears and onto the land. She placed her hand on Elgernon's brow, and at her touch he grew calm, and knew that his anger had led him astray. Humbled, Elgernon went to the place where the sun was buried and spoke to him. Elgernon said he would release the sun if the sun promised to be gentle, and to return to the earth each night. The sun, feeling remorse at what he had done, agreed. And so the sun rose again in the sky and shone his golden light upon the earth. Elgernon and Mithal, with the help of the earth and the sun, brought back to life all the wondrous things that the sun had destroyed, and they grew and thrived. And that night, when the sun had gone to sleep, Mithal gathered the glowing earth around his bed and formed it into a sphere to be placed in the sky, a pale reflection of the tr sun's true glory. From the tale of Mithal's touch, as told by Kisharel, keeper of the Ralafarn clan of the Dalish elves. The Dales, a promise lost. There, see the winter palace at Halam Sharal. Gaze upon its white walls and golden spires built on the broken dreams of a people. Our people. The human prophet Andraste was a slave in the Tevinter Imperium as our ancestors were. When she rose up against them, we rose up with her. Together we fought for freedom. In gratitude and kinship, Andraste promised the elves a new land, the Dales, and although she died, her sons kept her promise. Our people came from the farthest of winter to claim this new land. Here our journey ended. This was our Halam Sharal. As we laid the first stone for the city, our people vowed that no human would ever set foot on our lands. The greatest of our warriors swore to uphold this vow. One by one they came, invoking the names of Elgernon and Mithal, Andruil and Gilanain. Before all our gods, they dedicated themselves to Halam Sharal, becoming our protectors, our emerald knights. They would ensure that the Dales remained free. It was free, for over three centuries. But the humans and their new untrusty enchantry would not let us be. They pushed against our borders. They sent missionaries to spread the word of their prophet. They sought ways to subjugate the people once more. When we refused, we angered them. They destroyed us. Even the Emerald Knights could not stand against the might of their army, armored in faith. In the name of their Andraste, they burned Halam Sharal, 
scattering us to the winds. They forgot that once, long ago, Andraste's followers and the elves marched together. They forgot that Andraste called Chartan brother. A promise lost, as told by Keeper Gishrael to the young hunters of the Ralafarn clan on the outskirts of Halam Shiral. Salaz, the Hearth Keeper. Salaz, the Hearth Keeper, is seen as the sister of Andril the Huntress. While Andril loved to run with the creatures of the wild, Salaz preferred to stay by her home tree, occupying herself with gentle arts and song. It is Salaz who gave us fire and taught us how to use it. It is Salaz who showed us how to heal with herbs and with magic and how to ease the passage of infants into this world. And again it is Salaz who showed us how to spin the fibers of plants into thread and rope. We owe much to Salaz, and that is why we sing to her when we kindle the fires, and when we put them out. That is why we sprinkle our arabelles with Salaz's fragrant tree moss, and ask that she protect them and all within. As told by Gisharel, keeper of the Ralafarn clan of the Dalish elves. Wicked Eyes and Wicked Hearts The old gods will call to you, from their ancient prisons they will sing. Dragons with wicked eyes and wicked hearts, on blackened wings does deceit take flight. The first of my children lost tonight. Canticle of Silence 3-6 The dissonant Canticle of Silence is an alternate creation story to the versions of the Canticle of Thernades. Much of the canticle is written from the point of view of the Maker himself, as he addresses humankind, which is why it was ultimately considered a blasphemous presumption and removed from the verses of the chant. Popularly attributed to Archon Hesarian, Silence depicts the Maker as more sorrowful at the corruption and betrayal of his children, both spirit and mortal. He mourns the fall and corruption of the old gods as his own mistake, and urges his mortal children to turn aside from the dark path their elder siblings have led them down. Most historians agree that Archon Hesarian had indeed likely written this canticle during the Bloody Tevinter Transfiguration. Literary scholars of the Imperium often cite this as one of the oldest recorded pieces of propaganda. In the sixth verse, the grieving maker calls upon his mortal children to acknowledge that the dragon gods have manipulated and deceived them, and to throw off their corruptive influence and return to the light. As the people of Tevinter rose up and slaughtered anyone remaining faithful to their old gods, this became the mo rallying cry of the most terrible bloodbath in the history of the Imperium. From the Chant of Light, Literary Analysis and History by Sister Tessaria. The Winter Palace The Grand Apartments The swing once served as a home away from home for members of House Valmont's four cadet branches, but it has fallen into disuse since Emperor Florian's reign. The late Emperor would not allow relatives more distant than his sibling into the Winter Palace. For years, the entirety of the Grand Apartments was closed off. Excerpt from Architectural History of Orlais, Volume 1, by Elodie Furneaux the Servant's Wing During her reign's fifth year, Empress Selene substantially expanded the palace's servants' living quarters. Now, they now encompass a large stretch of the garden, which the landscape architect Thurneau designed. It is considered one of the finest examples of his style in Orlais. Excerpt from Architectural History of Orlais, Volume 1, by Elodie Furneaux the Grand Library of Halam Sharal. The Winter Palace's collection of book is one of the largest, one of the world's largest. The only, only the Library of the University of Orlais and the Imperial Palace Library compare. Famed cabinet maker Gustave Valfontaine designed and built the shelves, the finest examples of his marquetry technique still in existence. Excerpt from Architectural History of Orlais, Volume 1, by Elodie Fernot. The Versailles Fountain Emperor Judical I commissioned this massive fountain to commemorate House Valmont's historic victory against Xavier Dracon. The four lions represent Emperor Alphonse Valmont and his three younger brothers, 
Duc Isidore d'Arlens, Duc Yvon of Souveraine, and Duke Stéphane of Mont Valmontaigne, who took the field against the usurper. Excerpt from The Architectural History of Orlais, Volume 1, by Lodi Fernand. Le Requiem. After his coronation in 884 blessed, Emperor Florian commissioned the building of a chapel in the palace of Hollam Chiral as his first act to honor his infant daughter Evangeline, who died in the Hundred Days Cough outbreak of 877 blessed. The chapel contains exquisite murals Empress Justinia herself painted of the life and death of Andraste. Excerpt from Architectural History of Orlais, Volume 1 by Elodie Fernot. Places On Skyhold A page from an enchanter's journal scorched to near illegibility. The style is an old Ferelden dialect, circa mid to late divine age. Experiments and ambient lingerings for a staging. The question isn't, is it special? The question is, how special? We found relics, but there are always relics. Elves ranged far before their empire was crushed, but rarely did they return where they did not build. This place they visited again and again. I see it in the fragments. Clays from different nations, not just craftsmen. Styles from different centuries, not just clans. And yet no record of a ruin. The structures here are all Ferelden, with stone ferried up by a typical madman. Whatever was here, whatever natural spire, it was flattened for a floor, but I know the common shapes, and I will erect them as was custom. We shall, And we shall see what the elves wished to see. The note below is in a different, uneducated hand. I finished this for Master Gannot. His workings brought lightning, much lightning. The rods are pools of metal now, and all his workings burned. Master was also struck. I write for him his last words because his fingers are ash, and he did not live the night. The veil is old here. Skyhold has not just been claimed time and again, but sacked as well. We've managed to uncover some remnants, including a scratching under a pillar that mentions the name given by your witch. Old, but still long after the place had been built over. But the author knew something of its first purpose, or at least something of a legend. For Landavales him sabellinares in Algar, Melan... Melan... Hmm, Melanda... him san... Niras... Fentaldin... Word missing. Nada salin... Telrevas... Ne suli... Telsethanara. Tarasinan Telas Venir Abalath Vier word missing. Even with assistance from your elf, we managed only a partial translation. Elven is often a game of intense, not direct mapping of phonetic meaning. That means it's a mess. Our belief transformed into everything. Assertion problem? uncertain. All time is transformed into the final first death, uncertain. Inevitable threatened victory and horrible promised freedom in the untorn veils, uncertain. Where the sky is held up back, where the people give gain love, that is an apology promise from to missing subject, uncertain. Mostly complete, as fragments go, the rhythm is strange, not like others I've recorded. Perhaps less a poem than a statement? The elven language does tend to meander. Notes from the Archivist Possible references to Skyhold in the readings of the Great Library of Val Royale. What follows are the names of the powers that may have held a fortress in the region. Unfortunately, time and records are such that for many, the name is all that is known, and some of those are merely as reference in other works. 
your fortress is a vagabond, but years will do that to stone well made. The Tan Empire, passing mention of an unseen trading partner occupying where hold the sky in the Ravani ballad of Kintam of Knoll, thought fictional, date uncertain. Father of Rast, and that Ferelden built upon the sky, mentioned as a possible destination of the spirit of the dead Ban, a Ferelden lullaby dated to the Exalted Age. Lady Bander of She, Ferelden highwayman banished in 483 Black, thought to use a place in the clouds as refuge. Spire, or Lesian Tavern song mentioning Skyhold, by name as a fanciful utopia, but also claiming nugs with wings and a dragon that blows bubbles. T. Orn V. Possible etching of a major Skyhold's features, but no context available. Unknown language. The title has never been translated. Pre-glory? Tvinter carving, a broken relief that matches the outline of the main gate, but all possible scholarship suggests a structure outside Minratha's pre-divine. Possible shared inspiration, but it is not known in what direction. Study continues. We will apprise you of any other references of worth. From the office of Lord Gibbon, Archivist of the University of Orlais, Val Royal. Hmm. And apparently that's it. If there's anything else that I'm missing, I'll have to pick it up in another codex reading. But that is all for now. Ugh. Until next time, be safe. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.